Thank you everyone for coming to our Monday night shiur. Our shiur, before we forget, is uh, sponsored by the Yitzhako family. Zivugagun for Ariel Badrifka and Maya Mazal Badrifka. And uh, it's a different Ariel. <laughs> And also in Shmat Sarah Bat, Rachel, and for Yeladim Le Malka Batzdela Belor, and also for the anonymous sponsor, Hashem shall bless him with a lot of Hasdachai and all of his doings. Amen. Tonight we're going to talk about Korach. Before we talk about Korach, I want to let you guys know one thing. Last week's parasha in, in Shlach. We have a very interesting case where first time we see Moshe Rabbeinu falling on his face. It's like a case uh, where a lot of us here are parents, you know, when we have kids and, you know, they get to the stage where in life they make you so upset where you have no, you already don't know what to say, you don't know what to do and you just, you, you give up. So, and Parshat B'Shalach was the first time Moshe falls on his face with the spies, with the spies. That's when he falls for the first time. That's something else. That's, he covers his face by the burning bush. He doesn't do it out of dis, out of desperation in the burning bush. The opposite, in the burning bush, when he covers his face, he makes a tikkun. By the... Spies, when Moshe falls on his face, is at a state of desperation. The Pasuk says, By Korach, in this week's parasha, it's even worse. Moshe and Aharon fall on their face. It's a very serious offense over here. Because this week's parasha, Korach, is the secret to what the problem we Jews have had since the destruction of the Second Temple till today is this week's parasha. And the answer to the machloket of Korach is also in this week's parasha. And this is the secret of the Binyan Beit HaMikdash. When Aaron's staff, Aaron HaKohen's staff, was put inside the Kodesh HaKodashim, and it suddenly sprouts almonds and flowers, the flower of the almonds. The almond staff sprouts fastest, the tree. The fruit. And, and Aharon's staff sprouts that day. And everyone knows he's chosen. He was chosen. No, no more questions on the Levi'im and Kohanim. We have to understand over here about that. What was the question to begin with? Why did Korach argue on Aharon? Why did he argue on Moshe? Why did, Ahar, why did Korach... When did Korach argue on them? Was it during the 40 years... Was it in the beginning of the 40 years? Was it at the end of the 40 years? We look at the Torah and we're in Pashat Bamidbar. We're in Sefer Bamidbar. And Korach already, it's towards the end of the Torah already. Remember, the old Sefer Devarim was like the last 30 days of Moshe Rabbeinu's life. So we're towards the end of Bamidbar. So what is this? At the end of the 40 years? In the beginning? In the middle? What are we, what's going on? When did Korach rebel? Why did he rebel? Who was Korah? That's the question. Who was Korah? And before I'm going to answer this que- all these questions, I'm going to try to answer these questions. And especially the main question is, does Korah have Olam Haba? Is he going to get resurrected? When we say Olam Haba, it means resurrection of the dead. Will Korah wake up at the, at the resurrection of the dead? At the Chiyat HaMetim? Yes, right? that's the question. That was, I put it, that's what that was the question, right? Does Korah have Olam Haba? And the deeper question is, all the rabbis say, I'm sure you heard this in many lectures, Korach will be the Kohen Gadol in the future. Whoa. You never heard of that yeah, one? No, it's, you've heard of that? Yeah, people say, for me? Don't even start with me. <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> Korach is going to be a Kohen Gadol. What do you mean? So the thing that he fought against, and he caused all the reform... Conservative, to the team, but he's gonna be in charge of that. 
Why? Because for the last 3,000 years, he's been crying out, Torah, emet, Moshe, emet. Hello, bemetim chofshi. When you're dead, you're free of mitzvot. There's no answer to, there is no, uh, when a person passes away, he doesn't get any mitzvot or avero. He doesn't get reward, he doesn't get avero. He's free. It's not connected to him at all. Is he dead? He has a place in Gehenom. Like, if you're in Gehenom, you're dead, Habibi. You're not alive. 3,333 years to be exact. He's already, but there is a book called Minchat Yehuda. Marina, Marina, Yehuda Fetayin. To answer your question, he asked that question, what, 3,000, 3,000, uh, 330 years he's been gay, you know? So to answer your question, Rabbi Gabriel, there's a book called Minchat Yudah, Ruchot Mesaprot. And there, and he says a story of a girl named Rosa. Rosa, 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 Rosa. <laughs> this Rose, Rosa, she was the daughter of a very rich guy in Baghdad. And she felt she got married, but she fell in love with her neighbor Solomon. Sulaimon, Solomon. He was Jewish. And yeah, he was Jewish. And she fell in. She, you know, it started like Shlomit Badivri in the in the in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Egypt. She started to flirt with him. He flirted with her. It was you know promiscuous, you know, and. She did Averot with him. So they asked her in Gehenom, and before they went away with a Beidin. So they asked him, her in Beidin, how many times you were with him? So she said to him, I don't know, 50 times? She really didn't know, she didn't lie. He, he said, and, and all with the Averot she did was in one year. Oh. After one year, from Shamaim, they had mercy on her husband because every time he's with her, he's doing an Avera himself. Right. And he has to be divorced from her. He said, oh, it's not this kisad. So in the middle, when she was eating, she choked to death. She died on the spot. They didn't even know she was dead. This Rosa. So she was the daughter of one of the richest guys in Baghdad. So they asked her how many times? She said, 50, 60. They, they knew she wasn't lying. There. Yeah, they had, and then they said, no, you were with him exactly 100 times. When you got to the number 100, the Beit in Shamayim said, must speak is must speak. And they killed you. They sent Plonit Eshet Samech Mem, and she took your Nishama. What was her anxiety? Not Gehenom. 100 years in Kafakela. That's before the Chilul Shabbat, the Chilul Yom Tov. A woman does this Avero, she doesn't keep Shabbat 100%. That's before all the Avero, all the Zima, all the this. <laughs> One hundred years, you could open the book. They translated it in English. I don't know if they censored this part. <laughs> One, yeah, they censored the book. Hundred years in Kafakela. What was part of the Avera Kafakela? Every day she has to gather wood. And she, it's the wood that she will burn herself in in front of the Beidin and she turns into ash. Spiritual ash. Her soul turns into ash. And then the Beidin reconstructs her. Daily. Daily. For 100 years. You hear that, Gabriel? 100 years. Now, that's she was with a Jew. Imagine what a Jew goes through when he's with a Goya. Imagine that. The Zohar said, "En trufa lemakato." There is no trufa. There is no. But she never did. Uh, what do you call it? What? Did she ever do uh, vidui? Like, did she? No, do she died. Like she that. Died, died there was no time to do vidui. So the baby why. like bas must speak. So that's finish. why the, the payment was so much. Of course, but still, hundred years in Kafakela, there was another guy in the book Ruchot Musaf wrote. His name was Yehuda. Yehuda. He, one time, he did an Avera with a married woman. One time. What happened? It was by mistake. Not by mistake. Let's call it by accident. He was a, what do you call those people? He's between two Sukhari. He's the middleman. There's a word for them. They're the... Uh, he was a, in the Sukhari. He was a... 
Agent. Matchmaker? An agent. Let's call it an agent. Okay. He was an agent. He used to do shiduchim between two sokharim, two merchants. One time. Broker. He was a broker, be duke. Uh-huh. He was a broker. One time, he goes to the guy's house, the one of the people he wants to meet the shiduk. And he wasn't home, and his wife was home. She takes. She said to her maid, "Well, he's not home. The husband, go call him from the bursa, from the stock." Then she takes out of her pocket a purse full of dinarim. She said to him, "I'm paying you right now. Yeah, right now. Let's do the avera." And he, could, yeah, take me for granted. And he, and he didn't hold. He couldn't hold himself. The book says. The money. The money. It was the money. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't hold himself. We give, but it was one time you died there. One time. <laughs> Broker speed. We do. One time you did that there. One time. How many years kafakela they gave? Him? Fifteen years. One time. I'm telling you. One time. Why? Why was why was she given a hundred years, one for every time? He was given fifteen years for one time, because every time her husband oh. was with him, he got the adera. You know, it's a ripple effect. Fifteen years of kafakela. So when we do averot, and especially in the getter of Arayot, we're gonna see this week's parasha. You know, I Moshe falls on his face. I'll give you already the disclaimer, because Korach made a rumor about him. That he was doing Averot with all with the tent and the Ohel Moed. That he was doing Averot with all the Jewish girls. From the from the rumor, the Gemara, it's not, it's not a midrash, it's a Gemara. We're gonna read it tonight. Lean it. From the rumor that they accu- that Korach now Korach was a very influential human being. He was not a, he was the greatest orator you could ever think of. Politician guy. Politician to the highest extent. When he was speaking, 250, I don't have the chumash, Nisie Eda. You know what Nisie Eda is? Nisie Eda, the Gemara says, people that know how to make calendars in the Jew. They don't need a, the full moon, not the full moon. They can make calendars for you. Anche Shem. You know what Anche Shem? People of name. From their names, they were famous throughout the whole Arabian Peninsula. These were famous men. Let's call them a bunch of Ravavadya Yosef. And they were higher than Ravavadya Yosef with all the kavod to our Gedol Ador. But these were Anshe Shem. These are people written in the Tanakh. And they took with them... Who they take with them? The two antagonists of Moshe Rabbein. That's Throughout the whole desert. Datan ve Aviram. And On Ben Pellet. Let's not forget about Wait, him. Wait, On Ben Pellet. They're Jews. Datan ve Aviram. Bnei Ruven. And what do they say? Moshe Rabbeinu. He's a... Uh, in Russian they say what? Babnik? He's a yeah, uh, yeah. He's a uh, you know he played. Why did they say that? Look how they tricked the people. They said to the people this the the um, the Maharal Meprag brings this down. How did they trick them? They said, remember when we did the Egel Azahab, Egel Egel, the golden calf. Who did the Avera? The boys or the girls? The boys. Aharon said, give me your wives' earrings and the gold. The girls gave it? No. no. The boys beat Paraku. They ran away from their own ears. They took it off. This, that, not no. When Hashem, when Moshe came down from the mountain, he broke the Luchot. Hashem said, build me a Mishkan. Originally, our Mishkan was in every single human being's house. The original design. The original design. Hashem and now it was going to be one Mishkan. One area code, one zip code. Who were the first, when Moshe said, start donating, who were the first to donate? The women. The women. And what did they give? 
the part of them, the kumaz. I don't want to translate what kumaz is. It's a very a private part of jewelry they gave. The men said to themselves, whoa, 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 we're their husbands. Even if it was for an avera. When we asked to give them the zahab chesed, they didn't give anything. Suddenly the chief rabbi says, give a donation, and they're ready to give their, you know, they're ready to bear it all. And they give their, their nechoshet, their mirrors. The mirrors that they used to use in Egypt to make themselves have kids. And not only they use it for the kiyor, Hashem said, oh, don't use those mirrors for anything. Use all those copper mirrors for the kiyor, for the water, for the wash for the kohanim. The men already had inside of them jal. You know what jal is? Jealous. Anger, jealousy. When a man is jealous for his wife, what could he make her into? A sota. Right. Uh, sota. Oh, you accuse me. You suspecting your wife of. Uh, you suspect your wife of not being faithful. That's called a sota. Now a sota to make your wife a sota, you have to warn her first. If she does it again, then you bring her to the mishkan and she drinks the waters. But first you warn her. She said, you're a sota now. I'm warning you. Don't do that. Don't go. Right away, the woman stopped bringing. They stopped hanging out with the chief. Stop hanging out with <laughs> they stopped. They stopped going to the Moshe Rabbein because the their husband. The, that's how they said. Korach said to the people, "You gonna trust this Baal Gava? He's a Baal Gava. Why? Himself he made the king. His brother he made." Kohen Gadol. His sons he made Kohanim. Now, when you have a field, 10% goes to the lady. What? After that 10% of that, I already have to give to the Kohanim. So what's... What's, what, what's already 10%? And what's 10% of the... What's left for us? The peoples had so much anger in them. The Ramban said this whole episode, the Ramban, this whole episode of the Korach happened, all this happened the second year of the Jews coming out of Egypt. Right after. Right after where? Right after the spies. Korach saw the rebellion. He saw the... Uprise. The uprising. He saw the flames being fed. Now was the right time. He's a good politician. He was. He knew when to put in the, the stakes. When, when they, when, what was Korach's problem? Korach wanted kavod. Why? He was rich. When you don't give a rich man kavod, he goes insane. A rich man believes he's entitled to kavod. And he had kavod. Korach was the, was the grandson of Kehat. He was Moshe Rabbeinu's first cousin. First cousin. Korach was chosen to carry the Aron HaKodesh. Now you don't carry the Aron HaKodesh. Carries you. The Aron HaKodesh carries you. That means he didn't even have to travel. He would just hold the Aron, hover. It would hover glide. and it would, it, would glide, it would glide you to the place where you needed to go. Do you know what kind of kavod that is? You would touch a thing that a Kohen Gadol that got to his head. If I touch the Aron HaKodesh for days on end in the desert to travel, I don't die. How could a Haron, who could only go in once a year, and even then if he's Zochet to be in the Aron HaKodesh presence, if not, he dies. That means I'm more worthy. And then he had a dream. That something was coming out of the shooting star. He had a dream. I had a dream. I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a regular dream. This was a serious dream he had. Korah 
had a dream that from his Brit Milah something was coming out. But it wasn't Zera. It was stars. Don't even try to imagine it. <laughs> you won't be able to. <laughs> from his Brit was coming out a star. What did Bil'am call Mashiach? Tarach Kochav Miyakov. A star shoot out from Yaakov. They come Shevet Mi Israel and a tribe will arise from Israel. Now the Levim are a very special tribe. They were the only ones that had a Brit Milah in Mitzrayim. The Jews didn't have Brit Milahs in Mitzrayim. No Brit. You guys think they were eating the shish kebab of the korban pesach? They were bakay and they, they just had a no anesthetic uh, surgery done to them the day before. I don't want to, you know, put the image in your head. You know, forty-year-olds, fifty-year-olds, sixty-year-olds, seventy-year-olds. The day before they had the korban pesach, they were all Moshe and Aharon were going around giving them brit milas. And then they have to leave. And then the next day they have to do shashlik. <laughs> Could you imagine such a thing? Get well soon. Get well soon, exactly. <laughs> Try to make Allah like that. You understand? Imagine how they were leaving Egypt. They were, uh, you know, on, the, on one leg. They were, uh, they were limping over. They were on wheelchair. They three, after three days, it starts to really burn over there. There was no basset trace. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. There was nothing over there. There was no sprays, nothing. Everything was. And I'll tell you, I'll give you even more than that. For 40 years in the desert, nobody had a Brit Milah while they were traveling. Sakana Vashah. Only tribe of Levi. Levi. Don't, don't get it to Yehuda. Only if they were crazy enough to go. To have the Brit Milah in the desert, the Levim, they were a crazy tribe. These guys were, these guys were crazy. This Levim, till today, any Levi you meet, he's crazy. <coughs> try it, try it. Meet any Levi, he's crazy. He does weird things. Why, you don't know why. Nice, he's, quiet. he's pretty crazy. He's really no, he's pretty crazy. Yeah, he's, he, he has a uh, something over there. Yeah, you don't know him. He, we know him. He was wearing a mask. For he was wearing a mask. <laughs> 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 so long. Exactly. Yeah. And he got vaccinated. <laughs> and he got vaccinated. <laughs> the Levim, there. First of all, all Levim. By the way, you should know one thing. By the time the Levim got to Eretz Israel, over five of their families were wiped out. Five. Do you think all the story of the Jews forty years in the desert is said in the Torah? Absolutely not. Only a tip of the iceberg is said over there. There was a time in Parashat Pinchas, the Torah doesn't mention this story, Rashi mentioned this story from the Midrash, where the Jews got up and say, we're done. Four tribes, Gad, Shimon, uh, parts of Yehuda, Zevulun, they all get up, they go back. They really ask Moshe, they just get up and go. Who chases after them? Parashat Pinchas. They Which is it? Levim. And who are Levim them. are not even a quarter of the smallest tribe. There is a major war in the desert. Major war. Five families of Levim are totally wiped out. If you don't learn Rashi, you're never going to know these things. You understand? Five families of Levim are totally wiped out of existence. Not because they left early. Not because they left early, because those. Those families of those tribes wanted to go back to Egypt. Levim said, what? That's disrespect, you know, to the boss. They were very loyal. <laughs> Korach was loyal. When Moses said, after the after the Egil Azahab, who is to God to me? Who got up? Levim got up. Who was one of Levim? Korach. He's a very special man. His descendant is Shmuel. Hanavi! You know who Shmuel Hanavi is? Shmuel Hanavi, this week's Haftarah. Very special Haftarah. Shmuel Hanavi told all of Kalal Israel, Ed, be my witness. Did I ever take a penny from you for my services? Did I ever take a goat, a donkey? 
They didn't even a- yeah, they didn't even answer. Who answered? Bachko. Hey, I'm the witness. You never took a penny from them. Shmuel Anavi. The first he he was the one who anointed David. He anointed Shaul. He wrote the book of Shmuel. He wrote the book of Ruth. He wrote the book of Ruth. Shmuel Anavi wrote the book of Ruth. By the way, it's a sigula lezivu to read the book of Ruth. But the fight of Korach and Moshe is deeper than you think. It's the most basic instinctive fight of the whole Torah. It's the fight between Cain and Heaven. I want to read you something from the Ben Ishchai. This book of the Ben Ishchai, it's called Da'at Utvuna. He wrote this by heart when he was in jail for 30 days. Ben Ishchai was in jail for 30 days. It's basically pieces of the Etz Chaim of the Ari and the Rashash put together in ways that he wanted that any human being could learn it. He did this by heart while he was in jail. Kabbalah for dummies. Kabbalah for dummies. Kabbalah 101. 101, I like that bit. <laughs> he says, what's the point of learning Kabbalah? What's the point of learning the secrets of the Torah? Ben Ishchai asked this question. He's quoting Rabbi Chaim Vital. Listen to me very carefully, guys. Vehu. Ki ha'adam, the human being, tzarich, must. This has to be your goal in life. Put your phone away. Lehasig, to reach. Al yedei tircho b'chokma hazot. By toiling in this chokma, until he could realize and understand through Siata Deshmaya where his root soul comes from. And you have to know where your soul comes from, Adam Arishon. Not only in one part of his soul, in your nefesh, in your ruach, in your neshama. And that's not enough to know your Shorash Nishama. The Chayav Ladat, every human has to work in his life to the point that you must know Eze Mitzvot Chasera. Which Mitzvot are you missing? What are you, would you come to this Gilgul to do? The Gam Eze Torah Chayav Lilmod. What Torah are you obligated to learn in this life? Every human being came down to this world to learn a specific portion of the Torah that you're missing. This is the main point of your creation. That means, when you were first put in this world, you were had to fulfill all these parts. Now that you're born again, you only have to fulfill a certain part. Your job is to find out what you're missing. If you don't find it out, you're coming back again. Guarantee. You have to deserve to go to Gehenom too, you know that. You know that, right? But, to know your mitzvot in your Torah, you could only do this if you have a background, a bit Torah ha'ari kadosh. That's what I'm trying to give you guys here in the shul. <coughs> nothing more and nothing less. To give you guys that. So you should try to figure out what's your tikkun in this world. Korach and Moshe is the most sublime, the most basic fight that was between two brothers. There were two brothers. Two cousins that were two brothers. You see, when Hevel died by Cain... Hevel came back many times. First, he came back as his own brother, Sheth. His own brother was him. Then Sheth came back as Shem ben Noah. And more than that, I'll tell you, Shem's soul was split into two. Shem and his father Noah were two pieces of Sheth's soul that was Hevel's soul. And Shem and Noah both came back as three men. Avraham, Haran, and Nahor. 
three original brothers. You see, the three forefathers were originally supposed to be three brothers. Original. Haran and Nahor did not do what they were supposed to do. Avraham Avinu's neshama itself split into three pieces. To Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. It's not three different souls. It's three different pieces of a huge root. Haran and Nahor came back as Aharon and Hur. Oh, who dies? Which one is Moshe Rabbeinu's brother and one is Moshe Rabbeinu's nephew? His nephew. And Abraham Avinu, when he comes back as Yitzhak and then Yaakov to fix this Avera, how old was Yitzhak when he was in the altar? How old was he? 37. You like that chapter of Tehillim? 37. What's the gematria of Hevel? 37. Bidiyuk. And why did Esav want to kill Yaakov? Because he had the extra wife, Leah. Why did Cain kill Hevel? Because he had the extra wife. Okay? And Abraham is Isha Hayesed. That's Hevel. It's all the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? Cain, the first time he started to come back, it's very, very sad to say. <laughs> he came back as Yitro. The first time he started to fix himself, he came back as Yitro. He, since he was a killer, his tikkun was to come back as a goy. When you come back as a goy, especially Yitro, who's Rosh Hagerim, he must fight himself. He has to try every single Avodah Zara in the book till he gets the realization Zehakon Shutuyot. And then he has to say Baruch Hashem, as the Torah said. But what did he say? Baruch Hashem. That's all he said. But Yitro, since he was a killer in the previous Gilgul, he had a big klipa. Who was that klipa? Remember the Egyptian that Moshe killed? Yeah. That's that's Kain's klipa. The Egyptian that that he killed. That same Egyptian that he killed is Yoshka. Now you know who Yoshka is. The Ariya Kadosh says this in Sefer Gedolim. Yoshka, and why did he kill him? Because he killed him first. He got to knock him out now too. And what did Moshe do before he killed the Mitzrayim? He looked right and left. He didn't look right and left. He looked in his neshama. Out of this guy something good comes out? Zero he saw. You know some run away from these people. There is uh, Israeli Orthodox Jews, they're pro-evangelical kritmachs to come and be friends with Jews today. Run away from this. These are the biggest missionaries. The liars. They come to go inside Israel to missionize against Jews. Orthodox, Orthodox. Orthodox rabbis are friends with evangelical kritmachs to bring them into Eretz Israel. But they don't know. These guys, Esav, Sonet, Yaakov. They just want to missionize. They want to convert. Have you ever been to the Kotel Amarari? You ever been there? What's the one way the Jews could go into? Shar Yafo. Right before there is the Armenian quarter. You see big churches over there. What the heck are those churches doing in front of the Beit Hamikdash? You know what? That's the proof. You want to know proof somebody Hashem is real? That's the proof. The klipa is shore ala kedusha. Mashiach's job is to destroy all these things. That's his job. That's all. That's all it is. That's what you, when you you're gonna have a son, when you when you're gonna cut off his orla, bring him a breed. That's what you're doing. Mashiach doesn't have to do that in a micro way. He has to do that in a macro way. And it's, that's his job. He has to do it in a big way. Who's Korach? Korach is the Ruach of Cain. 
Yitro was the nefesh of Cain. Korach was the ruach of Cain, the higher level. He had a nishama that could have put Moshe to shame. He carried the Aron HaKodesh. If Moshe would have touched the Aron HaKodesh, Chayav, I don't want to say. Korach touched the Aron HaKodesh. Korach found one of the three uh, treasures of Yosef HaTzadik. You know what kind of treasure that was? The Gemara and Sanhedrin says three people will find those treasures. One was Korach, one was Antoninus ben Asveros, that's Marcus Aurelius, and the third one we're going to find when Mashiach comes. Amen. Do you understand that means all of us could split that treasure when just Korach found a third of it himself? Just his donkeys, his white mules, carry this case. 90. 90 of them? 90. Do you understand who Korach was? <clears throat> and he still wanted the kavod. Because he felt that he was entitled to it. Because he didn't understand. But he was the older brother. Korach is Kain. I want to read you the Ari. Veda. Ariel. And no. You're learning Shara Gilgulim right now. You're never going to learn this again. I know. You know. No, I know. Ki Korach ben Yitzhar. Korach, the son of Yitzhar. Is a ruach shel Kain. Aval mitzad hara shelo. From the evil in the ruach of Kain. The bad of the Ruach of Cain went inside Korach. He was always prosecuting. He was always, chanozi. He was always finding some kind of... Danganos. Like you. To have Achiv, his brother. He's Moshe himself. Masha'in can Yitro. Yitro didn't do that. What did Yitro do? The Goy. You want to hear something crazy? Lahavdil. Right now, that's going to make it Israeli Knesset. Right? You have over there a couple of Meshugayim and you have an Arab party. Ra'am, it's called. Mansur Abbas. Shem Rashaim Birkav. Do you know this Mansur Abbas today they came out? What was his. Uh, these are all lefties. That means today they came out, we're going to make a part of the Kotel for Reform Jews. Today. This was the news today. They're going to make Reform Conversions part of Judaism. They're going to make public transportation kosher on Shabbat. Today, today, today. This was the Haskemi. Uh, uh, agreements. Agreements. These were the agreements. The Arab! You know what his agreement was? You can't do homosexual rights. The Arab! Wow. And you have a prime minister with a kippah, soon to be. Thank oh, you for the kippah. <laughs> Thank you for the kippah. Nice kippah you have. Very nice kippah. Embarrassment. Embarrassment. Embarrassment for Claudius Israel. Keep Shabbat. Sleeping with the devil. Just for Kavod! Why? He's Korah. <coughs> he's, he's Mamash Korach. What did Korach want to do? The Zohar says Korach said, I'm the left, right? I'm a Levi. Levi is Gevura, he's the left. I'm, I want to be the right, I want to be a Kohen. This guy too, Lahavdil. <coughs> Lahavdil, I'm saying, he's not even compared to Korach. He wishes he was Korach. This guy says, I'm a righty, I want to be a lefty. You understand how the parasha fits? Do you understand how it fits? When we're living through history over here in Rabotai, it's all gonna bubble up to one boiling point. Bezrat Hashem. But Yitro, the Goy, he was a Goy. He was also from Kain. He separated himself from Kain. He became the good of Kain. That's why he gave Tzipora his daughter to Moshe. She was that extra twin. 
By Korah, who made him the Janga Nozi? The Gemara says in Sanhedrin, page 110a. His wife! That was the wife, the, the evil of the extra twin. The Korach Hashav. Let's understand what Korach was thinking. Korach thought, Ki boyu tu kan kain. In him, Kain will be fixed. Why did he think that? Ki hua bechor. Because he's the bechor, and Korach was the firstborn too. Lachen it gaber al Moshe. Betaabaze. He made a mistake. Ki ein tikkun kain ba korach. Kain's tikkun is not in korach. Ki hu harachebo. He is the bad in korach, not the good in korach like Yitro. Ela bezera shelo shu shmuel. The tikkun of, of kain is not in korach, but in his seed. In his descendants was who? Shmuel, Shmuel Avi. That was his mistake, Lari says. Vezeh shekatuv. Korach nibe velo yada. Korach had a prophecy, but he didn't understand. His own prophecy he didn't understand. That means a person could prophesize and not know what he's doing. Just like Eli, when he saw Chana, he thought it said Shikora, you're drunk, but it really it said. What did it really say? Kshera, you're kosher. That means you could have a, a sign, you don't know what it means. Velaze Amar. That's why Shmuel, why, how did Shmuel fix Kain? Who did Shmuel kill? Agag Amalek. That's the tikkun of Kain, to kill Amalek. Not to be the leader. Kain has to be the general. That's Kain's job. Not to be the leader. The leader has to be Hevel. The teacher of, the teacher has to be Hevel. The fighter has to be Kain. Korach thought he has to be the leader. He made a mistake. And where do we see that in Shmuel? Who came out of? Korach. And what did Shmuel do to fix Kain? He fought against Amalek. He killed Agag. That was the tikkun of Kain. Not what Korach thought. One more piece of the arena. I'll let you go tonight. Veda. And no. Kilatid lavo. In the future, Kol Shoresh Kain. Sorry, Kol Shoresh Kain, you Kohanim. In the future, whoever is from the Shoresh of Kain, his soul comes from Kain, will be a Kohen. Not that he suddenly will switch while he's alive. When he will be born, if he'll be from Kain, he will be a Kohen. Anyone who's from the root soul of Hevel will be a Levi. The opposite, because Korach was from Cain and Moshe was from Hevel. In the future, it will be the opposite. That's what it means that Korach will be a Kohen in the future. Not that Korach is going to come up from the dead and be a Kohen Gadol. Whoever said that to you, Lola Machara Gilgulim Yamav. Rather, the kids that will be born in the future, that will be from the root soul of Cain, they will be the Kohanim. And the people who will be born from the root soul of Hevel will be the Leviim. Today it's the opposite. Today it's the opposite. When Mashiach comes, those souls will be switched. The new souls. Be'ofen. Ki kidumat Korach ha-Levi she'amishoresh Kain. Korach, which was a Levi, he was from Kain. Those souls will take the Kehuna. Because Kain was the Bechor. He was the firstborn. And he needs to have the Kehuna. Today it's not like that. Why? There is a Tikkun that needs to be met. But in the future, everyone will get his part that he needs to play. I want to end with one last thing. I cannot get to the Gemara. One last thing I will tell you from the Gemara. One, one, thing, one thing and I'll let you guys go. Ah. Does Korach have Olam Haba? I'll answer to you straight up from the Gemara. Daf Kuftet Amud Bet. Adat Korach. The, the, not just Korach. His congregation. En lahem chelek la Olam Haba. They have no share to the world to come. Which is the resurrection. This is the resurrection of the dead. Doesn't make a difference. Don't be his defender. Be a Moses side. 
I Remember, am. Korach was the first reformed Jew. Because it wasn't that he went against God. He went against the Chachamim. When you go against the Chachamim, you know who Putin is? Yeah. Well, what's, his, what's his first name? Vladimir. Vladimir. Vladimir Putin. Do you know what he told Rav Yitzchak Yosef? Four or five years ago, he went to meet him, you know, like a whole political thing. The chief rabbi of Israel met uh, Vladimir Putin. He asked Rabbi Yitzhak Yosef, the son of Rabbi, the chief rabbi of Israel right now, he said, you Jews, what's your secret? Rabbi Yitzhak Yosef didn't know what to answer back to him. You know, I'm sure he had a lot of answers. He says, don't answer, I'll answer for you. <laughs> Russian, you know. He said, you're rabbis. As long as you have those rabbis giving shi'uri, giving their lives, teaching Torah, going out, putting tefillin on for people, teaching everything, you'll still be a nation. Korach didn't go against God. Moses Mendelssohn, I don't want to mention his name, but I did, the head of the reform movement, didn't go. He was an Orthodox Jew, by the way. Kip Shabbat. Didn't go against God. Conservative, Solomon Schechter. He didn't go against God. Uh, what was his name? The guy in the Knesset, the one who started the Zionist movement? Uh, Herzl! He didn't go, he did go against God. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, giving him cups. So Their main fight is against the Chachamim. That's why Avigdor Lieberman, Shem Reshaim Yerkav, another Russian. What did he say today? Yeshiva, stu yeshiva students to the army. You want me in the Knesset? Yeshiva students in the army. That was his one of his uh, conditions. That's Korach. Korach said, I believe in Hashem. Chachamim? Stop making stuff up. Stop making up. That's the problem. Adat Korach en laim chelek laolam ala. Who said that? Divrei Rabbi Akiva. You go tell me that I would say there is a dissenting opinion, but I'm not going to tell you. There is a kav zechut for that, but you know what? I'll give them the kav zechut. But the people, those reform liberals, those meshugaim in our journey, that I don't give them kav zechut. Him I get give kav zechut because he had a lot to deal with. But these guys in our journey, I don't give them kav zechut. And even so, Rabbi Akiva, who's Rabbi Akiva? Rabotai, who's Rabbi Akiva? Boy. Guess what? He was also Mishoresh Kain. Rabbi Eliezer Agadol was Mishoresh Hevel, says the Ari. Rabbi Akiva says on his own Shoresh, and Laim Chelek, Lolam Abba. Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, was, who was a Gilgul of Moshe, who was a Nitzot of Moshe Rabbeinu, he says, yes, yes, Laim Chelek, Lolam Abba. But we have to understand one thing. The only thing that will ever Shalom make a dent in Judaism was when you go against the Chachamim. And that's why the Torah makes such a big deal about it. Such a big deal. Because the Chachamim are the life force of Kal Yisrael. You take away the Chachamim, you take away Kal Yisrael. When there is no teacher, there is no student. So may we learn from the lessons of Korah. May we overcome this obsession of going against the Chachamim. May we be pro Chachamim, pro Mashiach Sitkenu, Beit Hamikdash, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Mizochel Lebinyan Beit Hamikdash, Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Amen. Rabbi Hananiah, Rabbi Kashiyah, Amen. Ratzah, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Ezakod Edi Seri Hachayvanim.